Hello and welcome back to Corgi Town USA. I am Candy. In my lap is Chuckles, our spokes Korg. Uh, well, in the rest of the uh, in the rest of Corgi Town USA, I hear Mortimer, and uh, well, the other two I don't hear because they're outside. But anyway, hi, I'm Catherine, mom and, of Digby. Uh, yes, mom of Digby and uh, Indy, our latest uh, honorary Corgi. Yes, yeah, senior fellow. Senior fellow. And then of course we have Mortimer and Booger. Mortimer is gracing us with his vocals today. Yes, he is. It is Corgi Town, where corgis run the town. That's right. We're also going to introduce Tito, the newest member of the Corgi Committee. We will be introducing Tito. Oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. But he was in he was in Aunt Catherine's lap, and he was just like all over the place, and there was no way. I could he's not cut out for podcast no life. he's not cut that's, out for that's podcast a chuckles life. job that's a chuckles job he's very um chuckles is extremely mellow well i wouldn't call chuckles mellow well he is when he's sitting in your lap doing the podcast he, well because he has a job he has a job yes his job is to be spokes cork that's right sit and introduce that's right yeah okay well if you're new here hi welcome every week we have new episodes about all things corgi and dog lifestyle podcast for pets and their people you lovely paul rents out there thank you for following us here well into our fifth season yeah i know yeah we've been doing this a long time we have i mean i have more gray hairs and wrinkles now that really no started <laughs> no thank you hairdresser M <laughs> me for sure but you know, <laughs> no no but we are glad to introduce, if you've been following us, we really appreciate you. We brought in some uh, lovely, lovely friends a couple of seasons ago from across the pond. Yes. And those were our lovely friends who live near Windsor. And that was Sam, that's the dad, and Jam, Snowden, and Honey. Should we bring them back on and get an update? We should. We should bring them back on and get an update. Okay. And that's Windsor as in Castle. Yes. For those who... For those Americans that don't know. Us Americans Hello, that only know America. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Hello there. And can I can I also add in, please um, also note that I'm also slightly grayer as well. <laughs> I'm so glad we're all aging so gracefully around yes. here. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and thank you for doing that with us. I mean, it beats the alternative, uh, so I'm told. It, this is true. This is true. I mean, my perspective is only on this side of the dirt, thankfully, so far. So far, so good. As far as I know. <laughs> anyway, we're good at digressing here. Oh. Sam, thank you for coming back and bringing your lovely crew. And we want to just welcome you back warmly in between Borks, of course, here from the studio. Uh, but if you would please tell our audience, tell dear listener, dear viewer, if you're new here, here's an update. Uh, we'll have Sam introduce you and the family. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, yes, my name is Sam. I'm um, living in Windsor, so just west of uh, central London. Um, and I have three corgis. So actually, if I just dip my camera down, you'll actually see I've, I'm covered with a carpet of corgis here. So we've got Aww. Honey, Honey, and we've got Snowden. And then we've got Jam, who is just to my just to my side also here as well. So Jam is the mum, Snowden, one of her daughters, and Honey, also another one of her daughters. So our corgi journey began five years ago with Jam from a farm in Wales. And then we bred her in lockdown and she had five girls of whom we kept two. And that's Aww. something of our family of, of tr a trio of corgis. And what what uh what self control only keeping two? Yes, <laughs> I would only keep two as well. Somebody who you know sits next to me for these shows would probably keep all of them, and then I have a scour problem. the neighborhood for more. Yeah, I have a problem. It's a substance abuse problem, corgis. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But we were talking when you were here a couple seasons ago that you how you sort of got discovered shortly after it was shortly after we said goodbye to the queen. Correct? You want to share that story with us again? Yeah, absolutely. So just where, where we live, we um, are sort of, I guess, a mixture of on the border between town and country. And so we have lots of beautiful open fields, the backdrop of Windsor Castle, um, when we do our daily walks. And so we just started an Instagram page to take some lovely photographs of what we get up to on our walks. And from that, we were contacted by an agent, uh, a dog agent, to ask us if we wanted to do some film work with, um, with the girls. And it was all royal related, coming up to the Jubilee. 
And from there, it really just snowballed into doing adverts and film work and photography work. And wow. um, I wouldn't say it's a full time job. It's certainly a hobby I massively enjoy now. It's taken me on a very interesting adventure. And um, I think it's also been brilliant for the girls um, to, to have this sort of a level of experience as well. And also, I think just getting the corgi name out there. I'm always really proud to promote corgis as amazing breed um, for for what they stand for, for their temperament, for just their general very, very adorable, sweet looks. I'm entirely biased, of course, but... Of course. <laughs> We're not biased at all here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, so is, uh, so are, are the funds going like, you know, 25%, uh, the, the girls get to put it on the side to get the latest and greatest iPhone and then the other 75% for university. Is that, you know, is that Corgi college? Corgi college. Absolutely. You read my mind entirely. I <laughs> often say that they're, they're off to university. They've got to hold jobs. They've got to get a doctorate. Um, but I think it also in the very real world, I, as a true life example, they have their own washing machine. So they have all of their bits and bobs going into a special machine just for them. Nice. Um, Love it. I've managed to fund um, a special vehicle for them. So they've got their own car oh. that they can get shepherded around in. Um, so, so yeah, so even just from special collars and bits and bobs, real treats for them that we've also put together for their jobs. Oh, I nice. love this. The Corgis yeah. have eaten trust. <laughs> This is so fun. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I love this. I love this life that you all are sharing. And I do want to mention as a side that um, thank you for getting the word out there. Of course, here at Corgi Town USA, we try to be a guide to Court. Tuckles is getting surly. I know. Because his friends are yeah, out there. His friends are out there. They're not in here. Anyhow, uh, we, we try to guide the uh, potential puppy paw rent on where to find uh, the right breeder, what genetic tests to get. Um, why maybe corgis may or may not be right for you. Yeah. So I just want to mention they're our favorite. We love them. You are going to be vacuuming all of the time. You are probably going to lose your hearing prematurely because they're very talkative. They are. They're very bossy. They need a strong leader. All these things we try to guide you all on. So if you're you're listening, you're viewing, uh, please reach out to us if you have questions about corgis. We love to be a source of information. We're never going to send you to one or two breeders. We're just going to give you the information so you can make that decision That's yourself. Very true. And we're also part of Shade Out DM, which is a degenerative myelopathy awareness group. I've got my little shade out, bracelet. I'm wearing my little shade out DM bracelet. Yes. And we're here to say that it's hundred percent preventable, very prevalent in corgis. I think the last research was 63% genetic carriers. Yes. Um, so please get a breeder that breeds before, I'm sorry, tests before breeding. And there's also the, um, overseas, we have breed out DM. They're doing this work. So I just wanted to mention that as we're talking about this, there yeah. are also other genetic tests, but we're very passionate about degenerative myelopathy. We lost our own hammer to that just a few months ago. Um, so we're here to be a source of information, but also entertainment. So let's get back to the fun stuff and um, let's talk about what you're doing lately. Sam, I heard we have some fun stuff like The Crown. Tell us about some of these fun shows you guys have been working on. Gosh, so um, I think from the last time that we that we spoke, um, we were contacted um, by our agent, um, and they did. It, it can sometimes be quite cryptic. They said that they had a job with Disney, so I thought, Good Lord, are we doing a voiceover? <laughs> are we? What are, <laughs> what are we up to? Um, and it was actually for The Bachelor. They, oh, The Bachelor USA. They were filming uh, an episode here in the UK where they were on a date and it was a royal experience. Okay. And the girl's job was um, in a very beautiful townhouse in Knightsbridge, which is a very upmarket part of yeah. town. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar. Um, to um, meet the couple. Um, so the couple were being served afternoon tea by a former ex-royal butler, trying on tiaras and all the sort of royal regalia. And among, amongst that afternoon tea service, these corgis would come running in. Now, of course, perhaps they hadn't quite worked out what corgis do also equally love other than people is food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so amongst the filming and, and playing, um, I think Snowden here snuck off with a few sandwiches. And <laughs> <laughs> it, it. Was or, it was organized chaos. Um, but in the, in the most wonderful, charming of ways as corgis do. Yeah. Um, 
So that was great fun with uh, The Bachelor. So that aired quite some time ago, but a really, really good fun experience. And um, like most filming work, a lot of waiting around for a very short period of airtime, but it all went really swimmingly well. Um, other than The um, Bachelor, we also have done quite a lot of work with Madame Two Swords in London. Oh. Um, they have renovated, it's a basement area, a, a sort of sub-floor area, into a royal experience. And um, it, it's absolutely beautiful, um, from gilt uh, gates as you walk into um, the, the royal area. And so the girls were uh, commissioned for a series of adverts um, to, to open the experience. So it was wow. basically um, the girls... Uh, attached to a GoPro camera running amongst the exhibits. Aww, that's perfect. I love um, it. So it's been a really, really fun experience with them and doing lots of meet, meet and greets with um, with Madame Two Swords as well. So lots of corporate clients coming in, having their photos taken with corgis. And most people say the same thing, which is firstly, they've never met a corgi before. Secondly, how calm they can be. Um, and thirdly, Oh, I think I quite like one. <laughs> so it's really interesting that you mentioned about just how you provide this information, because I think there are lots of people out there that do really consider, um, especially with the work in The Crown and their exposure recently, thinking yes. about getting a corgi and how attractive it may seem. Yes, it, it, ab absolutely. And I, I'm still, uh, you know, we spoke about this the last time and it, it still puzzles me how the Queen the person that, you know, uh, all of you watch 24-7 on TV or close to it. And she has the corgis running around all over the place. And everybody knows about her corgis. And yet um, the population is, oh, I've never seen one of these before. Yes, you have. <laughs> Your queen runs around with them. I, I am still kind of fascinated by that little bit. Well, and we had the author on who yes. wrote the Queen's Corgi and did some research. This was last season. Right. And I she was talking about how uh, the Qu Queen Elizabeth actually loved how sort of punk rock they are. The, the Corgis that they're, they're a little bit, how do we say this? Sassy. <laughs> they're yeah. They're a little sassy. They're, they're not a, uh, they're, I wouldn't call them obedient without a lot of obedience <laughs> training. Right. And that was what she liked about them because being being royal, there's so much control right. and composure yeah. you have to have. So yes. bring in these wild beasts, right? right? <laughs> yes. Well, I think it, it uh, Sam, am I correct? She the, 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 the queen had her little sassy side and I, I saw a documentary on her where her cousin's uh, said that she was quite the prankster when she was younger. Yeah. Oh, I imagine. I'm, I've had this, I've had very similar stories, and I think that um, you've hit the nail on the head. I think her late queen, Her, her Majesty, had thirteen corgis at one point, <laughs> but was able to call each of them in a line by name to their food bowl individually. That's and crazy. I just, I just that's think a it's, that's a lot of handlers. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the work of a lot of handlers. Yeah. I mean, you, you'd have to have help. I'm a trainer, and I would love to say mine are that controlled, but <laughs> yeah, right. Just chuckles trying to get, why is everybody barking up there? Yeah. Well, so <laughs> tell us about, okay, so you did Madame Tussauds. Um, there you have some some sculpt sculptures, right? That's right, yes. Yeah. So in um in London during the Jubilee, they um they started a scheme which was basically um, different sized corgi sculptures ranging from um, one or two meters, uh, well, about a meter long to about three meters long um, in length. And these enormous sculptures, and they were uh, commissioned by different artists and decorated, and they raised money for different charities and brought awareness. And they were placed in different landmarks around London, from um, Trafalgar Square to outside Harrods to along the river, riverbank, um, in the foyer of different hotels. And it went slightly un, unremarked because they came for auction a few weeks after the Queen passed away. And uh, I managed to buy three. So in this particular auction, these corgis are named after the Queen's own corgis um, since she was a little girl. 
and they're all decorated from weird and wonderful, from Union Jacks to, with bunting to rainbows to stripes to dots to all sorts. And um, it was to represent the Commonwealth and all the different uh, art and design features. So the three that we bought and successfully won at auction were um, one called Susan, the Queen's first corgi. Um, so very similar to the book you were referring to earlier. And um, that was painted like a lifelike corgi. Then we had uh, another corgi called Willow. And she was is painted with lots of um, rainbows. Um, it was to be LGBTQ plus friendly. Plus also during the pandemic here in the UK, we did a lot of movement and um, appreciation for the NHS, our healthcare service. So we have a very sort of a colorful corgi. And then our last, last corgi we have is a slightly smaller one and it's decorated with cabbage flowers. And more specifically because Prince Philip's nickname for the late queen was cabbage. That is precious. That is very precious. That is so have you posted about these? Not yet. No, I've kept okay. it under my hat. They're they're in a garage covered with lots of bubble wrap at the moment, only because <laughs> my idea is, my hope, my sincere hope is um, that in Windsor that we could organise what I would quite like to have as a corgi trail where tourists Ooh. come. We're going, um, we're going, we're going, we're going, <laughs> we'll be there. You'll, you'll be on my guest list, absolutely, once it's commissioned. Yeah, since we invited ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so oh, those Americans. Through town and to discover, because there is already one lovely bronze sculpture um, in a park called Bachelor's Acre in Windsor uh, with the Queen and I think about six corgis. Um, and I'd love to add to that and have at least two more of my three uh, added so that it could become a corgi trail through Windsor so that there will always be a link of of the Queen's affiliation and ownership of corgis and for tourists to come and do selfies and take photographs and really recognize and promote and appreciate. That's I love this so much. I know I love it too. When do are we you, going? I know right. Well do you have a timeline of when you would like this to happen? Um, I'm having conversations with the council and with the um, tourist board in uh, springtime, so imminently, really, oh. um, with a view of then trying to hopefully roll out by by the late summer, early autumn. Ooh, okay. So I'm seriously considering. Yeah. Both Chuckles and Digby can ride on the plane. Okay. They're support animals. Okay. Well. Um... Yeah, Dig, go. Dig, 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 Digby is a support animal. I don't know that I want him on the. <laughs> you don't want him on me. the on the trail of Corgi. <laughs> it, you know, it would be adorable, trail. and I don't know. We'll see. We'll <laughs> we'll see how he behaves. Calming chews. Yeah. Oh, calming chews. Yeah. <laughs> I trained him. I know Give you trained him. Credit. <laughs> yeah. No. He he's 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 good, and and then he gets to that point where he's like, screw it. I'm not being good anymore. I, I just I I did my. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I love this idea. Yeah. I, I really do love this idea. We're excited for it. We're, We're here for it. We're hoping we can be a part of it because Absolutely. that sounds so yeah, I'll keep you. I'll keep you informed for sure. It's yes. something I think um, it would really just beautifully solidify. And I, I hope perhaps maybe to have some other charities involved. Obviously, um, at the time of this being filmed, we've just learned about the Princess of Wales and her and her battle that yeah, she's yeah. being very brave about talking about and so on. So yes. perhaps there can be a few other charities to link with. It's all about um, raising awareness and exposure. And if we can do it for a good cause, why not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've been really, I've been following that as well. She's, I, I love the, she's so gorgeous. She's beautiful. Yes. Every time, sometimes I'm like, gosh, she's just so incredibly beautiful and so young and so vibrant. So yeah. yeah, we all are, we're pulling for her so that she can get through this journey. But thank you for sharing for this. We're all going to be staying tuned for this Corgi trail. Tell us what's next for the Corgis of Eton. Gosh, well, I thought that things had really reached a peak when we <laughs> did some promo work for Netflix on The Crown. Um, but just the, the the adventures keep on rolling. I, I think that I'm um, my, my my husband often says to me, I think I think that's it now. I don't think there'll be any other jobs. And then we'll get a phone call and suddenly there'll be an inquiry. So it's been wonderful. So um, we, we can't say too much, but in a few months time, we've got an advert coming out with a well-known 
Hoover brand. Ooh, that's my favorite. Uh, I always say it's the one that can keep up with all the corgi fur. Yep. Absolutely. All of the glitter uh, that, 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 that they love to share. <laughs> And um, and I think just a lot more adventures. Really, we um, we're just really determined to. My, my mantra coming into twenty twenty four was um, to make mem memories every day, and that's what I really want to keep on doing with the girls and um, taking them places and really giving them a good giving giving them a good time. And um, I think hopefully just meeting lots of members of the public. I I, I think that it's a wonderfully warm feeling, and, yes. and this is. True story, I was um, taking the dogs to the groomers and I parked on the high street where I really shouldn't have been and I was quickly unloading them and a lady stopped with her child in a buggy and said, oh look, there's Jam, Honey and Snowden. Oh, wow, paparazzi. paparazzi. <laughs> and I said, oh, oh you, you, you know them. And she said, can I just say, we don't just know them. The moment my daughter wakes up, she asks, Mummy, have the corgis posted? Aww. And that to me was just the most precious moment where I was so stressed and trying to get my errands done, right. having such a lovely, wonderful moment. And I continually run into her. And it just is so wonderful that these three lovely animals can bring such joy and connection to complete strangers. Yes. Yeah, I absolutely. That's, that's a, such a reward. And it softened your heart, didn't it? Oh, absolutely. Moment. Absolutely. And it reminds me every day we have so much more in common than we do different. And yes. I think that um, certainly animals, especially corgis, or, you know, but certainly any breed at least, dogs are a really precious and wonderful thing to have in your life. And certainly to share them in the way that I'm so lucky to do, uh, I think that's just magic. Yes. We agree. That's, and we did, uh, so we'll do the Corgi Nationals, Corgi Beach Day. A lot of times we'll have a booth for yeah. Corgi Town USA. And we're always there so we can spread the word, you know, get people to listen to us and, and hear what we have to say about corgis and get introduced to uh, people like you and your wonderful corgis. And we had so many people show up at the Nationals because our banner said, come meet Chuckles, our spokes cord. And that's kind of all we did all day is people said, we come up here for kisses from Chuckles. Where is he? <laughs> Yeah. No, no, that's okay. We don't exist. <laughs> we're just the hosts. We just hold yeah. the microphones. We're yeah, we just chuckle. We just clean up their poop and vomit. I mean, mm. <laughs> no, but I was, I'm actually perfectly okay with this because yes. I, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. You say, well, I love that you love my chuckles and that you want to meet them. And so, <laughs> yes, I understand that heartwarming feeling. And it's just so fun when you travel, if you have friends that visit you, when they come. And my friend Marvin, the first yes. time we went to travel, that was when I had my, my first Corgi Lilo. And then we had Hammer and I had Booger. And we went to the boardwalk and the pier in San Diego. And I said, can you wait here for just a minute? I'm going to run in and uh, get a drink or use the restroom. And I come out and he had a crowd of people surrounding him yeah. with cameras Absolutely. <laughs> they, taking they, pictures. And he looked at me and he said, he's surrounded. I can't even get to him. All the puppies are getting putts. And he said, you can't go anywhere. I said, oh, yes, I oh, know. Yeah. We call it the paparazzi. The paparazzi. And the only time. Paparazzi. I, I love it. <laughs> Yeah. So you guys have paparazzi. You have paparazzi. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only time I didn't experience it was uh, when we were up in Jerome and Wigan, uh, my fiance's Wigan passed last year and um, he was a cattle dog and somebody came up and I fully expected them to, uh, to, to go all over Digby and they were all over Wigan. And I was like, and Wigan was so like, Oh, thank God. Somebody noticed me. Oh, hi. Take me away. He's used to living in Digby shadow. He, he was. Yeah. Shadow of the Korg. Sh shadow of the Korg. <laughs> Well, this is wonderful. If you're if you're viewing or you're listening, you can follow Corgis of Eton, E-T-O-N, on Instagram. I will drop that link down in the description box so that you can follow these travels. Specifically, I can't explain how excited I am about this Corgi trail you're working on. Yes. Staying tuned. And then also for your partnerships that you're working on. Because we're looking forward to a, a commercial coming on and saying, hey, those are our friends. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's always it's always fun to like look on TV and go, I know that person. I know them. I know them. I know those sure corgis. you do. I know them. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. But we're fantastic, I think, seeing, seeing a corgi representing 
um, not only the best of British at times, we, we had an event at Harrods and it was a lovely corgi who we met uh, called Giovanni. And, um, and he was there on the Burberry stand rocking the tartan. And it, it, again, this is brilliant. I can, I can point out friends and it's just lovely to see their representation. Absolutely. Oh, Aww. I love that too. The camaraderie of quirky yeah. people is really quite wonderful. We have some friends, of course, our friend Bacon kind of yes. knows everybody. And so it's kind of fun to see his travels because they, they meet quirky friends from all over from following Bacon and, so we're so excited for you guys and we are, we don't want to take you, uh, we don't want to take up your whole evening, but also we have some borkers over here that I think are just demanding treats. So maybe we ought to go tend to that. I think we might have to, <laughs> we might have to, but thank you so much, Sam. We appreciate you so much for coming on and telling us about your new adventures. Thank yes. you so much for having us again. And certainly we'll be looking forward to catching up with you with hopefully some weird and wonderful news in the future. Absolutely. That's our favorite kind of news. That's weird right. and wonderful. <laughs> we look forward. We'll give all the girls belly scratches, and you have yes. you, you have a Labrador as well. We do. Yes, I have a twelve-year-old Labrador called Marmalade. Marmalade. Aww, Marmalade. We'll give them all belly scratches for us. Tell them they're very, very good babies. Oh, bless yes. you! Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you so much. We'll be in touch. And again, uh, you can follow Corgis of Eaton on Instagram, and I will drop that link on. You all have a wonderful evening. Yes. Thanks again. Thank Bye. you. Bye. I can't wait for the Corky Trail. Yeah, that's that's going to be fun. Yeah. That's going to be fun. I also like hanging with Sam because I love that accent. <laughs> I'm <laughs> such an American. I, I am. I'm such an <laughs> American. Such a cheese-eating American. <laughs> such, a, such a New Yorker. Yeah, New Yorker. It's, yeah. It's like, a, it's like a way better accent than I grew up with. <laughs> that was a nanny. That, that was a nanny. Well, out. yeah. I, I, I was recently in New York, so <laughs> it, it all comes rushing back. <laughs> Well, we hope that you enjoyed this. Yes. Uh, I will also drop the link to the first episode we did with this wonderful family. We're big fans of theirs, so we're honored that they come on to do our little show here so that we can tell all about the fun things that uh, they're doing. And stay tuned. We're here for you every week. If you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe. We have entertainment-based episodes like this one today, but we also have training, grooming, health of your corgi. Uh, we have vets on. We also have authors. Uh, we, we talk about all kinds of different health concerns and just general life in your corgi, uh, how, how to keep your pets healthy and happy and, and live the most, the most harmonious uh, long life. Yes. Yeah. Let's sign off. Let's sign off. Candy and chuckles. And Catherine and Digby somewhere and all Indy the somewhere other, uh, Indy and Mortimer, Mortimer and Booger, Booger and Tito and Tito. Oh, oh gosh, yeah, we're just going on and on. And on. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>